Hi guys, what's going on? Good to see you in June. This is Oleg, your real estate broker with Winner Value Commons. This episode going to be my June market update for all Seattle, Bellevue and all Eastside locations. And before we jump into this episode, I'd like to start with some latest news. Housing starts and building permits, much bigger declines than economists had expected. Our Diana Olick has more on what's been happening to housing in just the past few days. Hey, Diana. Hey, Carl. Yeah, big miss on both starts and permits. Housing starts fell just over 14% month to month in May, down 3.5% year over year. The street was looking for a 2% decline. That's the lowest level since more than the start of the pandemic two years ago. If you break out single family, which is what we're watching so closely right now, that was down 9% for the month. The builders are clearly worried about rising mortgage rates and a sudden drop in demand from home buyers. We saw that in the builder sentiment numbers. Building permits, which are an indicator of future construction, they fell 7% for the month, essentially flat year over year, but the lowest level since September of 2021. The biggest drop was in multifamily, but single family down 5.5% for the month. Again, all of this because affordability is just getting whacked by rising mortgage rates. It sounds like end of the world in a housing market. Right? Inflation 8.6% today. The Fed's hikes interest rate by 0.75 percentage points. The biggest hike since 1994. And a lot of articles asking what's going to be happen next. Those articles create a lot of fear on the buyer side and a lot of fear on the seller side. On the buyer side, fear with affordability. The house is not affordable any longer because uh, hikes with, with 1% decrease buyer power for 10% and we already have jumped from 3% almost to 7% within 3 months. So which is decreased buyer's power almost for the 30%. And on the seller side, it's always fear if too late to sell property right now or not. And are we missing the market already? or not. So let's go to the local numbers right now and you will find out by end of this episode where this market is moving. Allow me to start with Seattle. We have medium sell price $1,025,000 in the month of May and, and this is only residential data. Increased sale percent year over year and you guys can see we have 893 pending sales with 504 active listings in months of May. Inventory increased comparable to a year ago from 0.5 months to 0.6 months. Number of homes sold over asking price decreases in May to 69% and lower than April and March. Percentage of homes sold less than 15 days in the market pretty much the same for last four months in Seattle. Number of listings sold above asking price 69% in Seattle area right now. And as you guys can see, we have some uh, kind of seasonality for last five years. And the peak uh, when the home sold over asking price was in March through the April. And those lines you guys can see together with me going down every year and market become more stable market with less listings sold above asking price pretty much every month from now on till December. Next year we're going to be see together what's going to be happening with this market. We're expecting to get less listings all about asking price by end of this year. Now let's jump into east side. On east side we have medium sell price $1,590,000. And if you compare this data to a year ago, increase for 22% year over year. What changes we have right now on this side, we have one month of inventory. So we move into the balance market right now with 754 pending sales and 745 active listings. And here's a slide for you guys year to date starting from December till May of 2022. You guys can see with me right now on the screen we have price reduction in May. In April we have medium sell price $1,722,000. In May we have $1,590,000. Year over year price increase uh, to 22% but uh, from one month on the east side prices went down for about 8%. And this is 
big reductions in the price. And for those guys who are new to my channel is site, we consider cities like Bellevue, Mercer Island, uh, Redmond, Kirkland, Sammamish, Issaquah, Woodenville, Basel, all those cities considered east side. Our homes uh, sold less than 15 days on the market, it's pretty similar for the last five months, right now it's a 93%. Number of homes sold above list price right now, it's about 66% on this side. Now, this number is going down and we clearly see market corrections on the east side. So in one month again, prices dropped for about 8%. And this graph represents, guys, number of listings sold above asking price. And you guys can see with me on the screen right now, we have 66% in 2022. It's a blue line and very similar to 2018. But uh, similarity, guys, for all of those uh, last five years, you can see together with me, uh, highest numbers was always in starting February through the April, every single year for last five years. Starting in May, a uh, number of listings sold by asking price going down every month. And uh, we expecting to get this repeat as well on this side and we'll see together what's going to be happen next year if market going to be shift again in January. Uh, we still have seller's advantage because we have less than two months in inventory pretty much in all area except one, except West Bellevue. Right now it's a 2.3 months of inventory and this is very explainable why. In West Bellevue guys, uh, medium sell price 3.5 million dollars is very high benchmark for the price and that's why we have 43 homes on the market over two months right now and I think luxury market is going to be hit first with the market correction. You guys can see with me on the screen market update city by city and this is comparable to a year ago. If you compare those properties in those cities to a year ago, you guys can see market went up and went up a lot. Some areas 34%, like in North Basel, some area like 29%, like east of Lake Sammamish. And the uh, market went up pretty much everywhere. People who purchased properties five or six or seven years ago, they're not going to be hurt through this correction, even with 10, 15, even like 20% corrections, not going to hurt those people because they built so much equity with the last five years in those homes. And why people buying less homes on east side and we have higher inventory right now? Because east side is a, it's a tech location and as the tech stocks going down, you guys can see with me on the screen like Amazon went down for last 52 weeks for 36%, Microsoft went down 22%, Google stocks went down 25%. It's a big hit on IT industry and those buyers pull out from the market. The market speaks for itself with less hotness right now on this side. Oh boy, let's talk about price corrections on this side. What's going to be happen? with real estate prices if we going to have similar correction like we had in 2018. And in 2018, you guys remember, prices dropped for 10% within five months and took almost 17 months to get back to previous level. Now on this side, we already dropped for almost 8%. So this correction going to be bigger than in 2018. If you, if you draw a line from today's medium sell price on the east side, it's $1,590,000 to 17 months ago. In November 2020, price was $1,060,000. I think uh, dropping price from $1.6 to $1,060,000, it's going to be a very extreme drop. But if we drew a line to a year ago, the medium sell price on this side was $1.3 million. And I think that's reasonable to say we might see price correction from $1.6 to $1.3 million with the next 17 months on this side. But again, it's going to be all depends on inventory. How many listings going to be listed from now till the end of this year. Why is this important? Because simple formula supply and demand simply 
works. If we going to have more supply and less demand, yes, prices probably gonna go down. But if we not gonna have a lot of supply and still have demand, I think we might go through the stability in real estate market and then prices might go up again next year. What reason can be for East side to see low supply from May till end of this year? The reasons can be very simple one. People not going to list property if those people already refinanced property within the last few years and they have very low mortgage payment for the home. Majority of the people, like 90% of the people already refinance. The finance boom is over. And majority of the people, like myself, we have 2.75% mortgage interest rate fixed for 30 years. Another reason why we probably not see a lot of supply because 25% of all homes on sales east side was sold for cash buyers. They don't have any mortgages. They don't have reason to sell properties with the market corrections. If price is gonna go down, they're most likely gonna keep the property, probably put it in the rental pool, those properties. And only those investors who desire to sell properties, investments property, and locate funds to different locations, they might be gonna go to the market if you don't have a lot of those people right now. This is why I'm thinking we might see a stability in the market going to the balance market, but we might not going to see a lot of supply in the market by end of this year. And if you have a buyer looking to buy property, what you can do in this crazy market when the mortgage interest rate went up almost to 7%? You can do a lot of things. Uh, first of all, my advice for you guys will be not to get serious fixed mortgages because you're going to have opportunity to refinance house in the future. And when this opportunity is going to be happen, going to be happen when Fed beat inflation, inflation will be back down to 3%. And when inflation is going to be knocked down to lower number, mortgage interest rate going to be knocked down as well to probably three to four percent i'm strongly believing that so right now when you purchase properties no reason for you guys to get three years fixed rate with seven percent interest rate if you can get 4.5 percent uh, for like three years arm or five years arm and be creative with your finances a lot of lenders offer free refinances if you finance with them right now. Some lenders often jumbo loan product starting not with, not with $900,000 and up, starting with $100,000. And uh, if you guys know what jumbo loan means, it's a private finance loan when usually interest rate for the mortgage uh, lower than confirming loan up to $900,000 and lower almost for 1%. That's 1% can help you to save 10% of your buyer power if you get lender who can give you like jumbo product for $500,000 purchase or $600,000 purchase. You can be creative in this market and you can still purchase property for your family because I am strongly believe real estate is a great investment and uh, even if it goes through recession, a recession not always means uh, real estate prices are going to go down. I'll show you guys uh, last recessions we see and only prices went, went down in 2008 recession about 19% but went up so much more after that. Real estate have a lot of financial advantages and I'm always recommend to buy property and buy more. Always buy, never sell. If you're a seller and decide to sell property in this changing market, it's still way to sell right now in this market. And to get top dollar for your house, guys, you need to prepare your house for sale because most buyers who live in these locations in sale area, uh, they work for IT and those people rather pay more money, rather pay 100,000 more for already repair, fixed, remodeled property rather than for a fixed upper. And if you guys prepare your house for sale, if you do great landscaping, if you fix everything inside, do pre-inspection, if house is staged, uh, you can get top dollar 
for your house on today's market. And if you guys need help, reach out to me. I would be love to be your real estate resource. With that, guys, thank you so much for being with me. Don't forget to smash like button, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you find value in this episode. Until next time, have a fantastic week.